Welcome to Mark's Minis, the point of which is to wear funny hats. The point of which is to provide quality content so we can all learn to become better painters. This is just a 10 minute quick guide on how speed paints can help improve your mm. basing. Better basing is power! So of course you could paint a plastic pre-molded base. So what's nice about this workflow is that you could stop it at different points and immediately start dry brushing it or adding foliage used for, for example, World War II or a jungle scenario or a desert scenario. Or you can continue building up layers to achieve other effects. And yes, I have learned how to use a lightsaber as a great way of getting my point across. So stay tuned keep your eyes glued don't turn your back don't look away and don't blink hi and welcome back to the lab here at mark's minis these new speed paints have changed the game across all aspects of our hobby and today we're looking at bases now even total beginners know that all miniatures need a base otherwise they would fall over and we all find out pretty quick that it's an important part of the presentation of the miniature and affects the overall look. My preferred basing material is Litco 3mm laser cut plywood. They're a little pricey but when you combine them with the adhesive flex steel backing material they become part of a excellent storage and transportation system. Here I am using an ink jar like a rolling pin to really activate the adhesive and lock down those adhesive backings. So we're going to accomplish two things in this video. I'm going to throw down a super easy basic basing 101 recipe that anyone can follow that you will be able to use as a foundation for most all of your army basing needs in the future. Hold that thought, before I continue, I have to grab a spare Cyberman that I'm using for the 60th anniversary of the Doctor Who franchise project. <laughs> Clunk, that was satisfying, but this guy's pretty tough, so I need to get the big guns and use the torch lighter to melt his foot off of this old crappy plastic base. It's okay to damage his feet a little bit because they will be concealed by basing material and decor. Now the theme of the Cyberman base is going to be derelict spaceship, so we're going to need some spaceship wreckage. So here I am using the torch lighter and a screw and a pliers to basically mangle it up a bit, get some impressions in there, some texturing. Then I'm just going to cut it up into random bits and use those as base decor. Spaceship wreckage bits cut. We are now going to do our first step on the bases. Put a couple drops of your favorite varnish directly on the base. Follow up with a like amount of thick dark paint. This step does three things at the same time. It protects the wood, establishes a deep base color, and sets up some initial texturing. <laughs> So usually one would work on other things while this is drying. Once it's dry, we're ready to start mixing up some drywall patch compound. This stuff is cheap, you can find it anywhere. I have a big box of it and it's what I'm going to be using for the foreseeable future. So support your local hobby store and pick up a couple basing mediums. I've tried using natural ocean sand but it's just too random. This is where you can get creative. Add some paint, whatever color you think is appropriate for your models. To get things rolling, I went with a dark earth tone and a single grit of basing medium, and that should be fine for smaller bases. For the larger base, I added two larger grain sizes of basing medium for some variation. This mixture is wildly variable and you can use it to come up with all kinds of effects including dry cracked earth, volcanic, swampy, and all kinds of other effects. And it's just fun, you know, you gotta roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty and knock out some bases and eventually gotta do it. We all gotta do it. So just dive in and have some fun. Be goofy with it. So the good news is it dries pretty fast and looking at an angle we see we have created all kinds of interesting textures. 
And this is great because speed paints love textures. For the next step, take a like amount of water and varnish and paint and mix it up. This mixture will soak into the dried drywall compound, toughening it, and it will establish our dark base tone. Feel free to experiment here. I always start off with a dark brown. Feel free to mop up the excess with any brush that can function like a mop. Once dry, you can just have some fun and start slashing down some color. Now we're not exactly dry brushing here, so do not be consistent and make sure your brush is fairly dry before you get into the slap chop motion. Have fun and mix it up with the colors. I usually start with darker colors and build my way up through some reds and maybe top off with some yellows. Now because we're using speed paints, I was a little too aggressive with the lighter colors and I topped off with some white because as we know, speed paints don't cover over dark colors very well. Even so, I got some transparencies and a lot of depth of color. Okay, now it's time for the speed paints to jump into action. Remember, speed paints always need their trusty sidekick. Speed paint medium! Now don't go and mix up the medium with the speed paint all in one go. Instead, let them flow together naturally and then you can load up your brush with either dense speed paint or mostly medium. Cool trick. So I'm being a bit random here. I wanted to show you a random mixture of colors and tones and there's quite a bit of blending going on so we can see what these speed paints are doing. But I really wish you could see what is in front of me right now. The variation of color and tones is just amazing. And these bases already are starting to look just gorgeous. I'm pointing out on these bases that clearly we see some areas that are swampy or jungle or desert or arctic. So clearly speed paints can offer us a lot of versatility on terrain types. When they're dry, we want to highlight just a little bit with some dry brushing to bring out just the peaks. Feel free to experiment with your dry brushing colors. Typically, light colors do best. Now, I'm going to continue developing the two smaller bases into science fiction style bases, which are supposed to be from a derelict crashed spaceship. So I'm going to start by gluing on my spaceship wreckage bits that I created earlier. Gluing done, now I have to individually brush prime these bits prior to painting them with, of course, speed paints. To provide the speed paints a good undercoat, I'm going with my brightest silver Vallejo Air Chromium. So I want to tie the model to the base. So to do that, I go with a blue tone because the Cybermen have a few slightly blue details. When the speed paints are dry, the last step is to just glue on the soldier. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I leave you now with some pictures of some finished bases. This is just a small sample of a big Doctor Who project I'm working on for the 60th anniversary convention. Speed paints helped a lot and they helped me get these units out fast.
This is a big project and there's more to do, so there's more opportunity to document more fun with speed paints. He's such a good dog. He changed his tail for a two stick. He's a good boy. Good boy, Psycho. Good oh, yeah? Boy. Did you want that two stick? Only good doggies get that two stick. Oh, oh And yeah. please don't forget to like and subscribe. This channel is just getting started and I have a bazillion topics to cover about how speed paints can improve all kinds of stuff with our hobby. Stay tuned.